Howdy. Welcome, fam. Welcome to the Dr. Deal Junkie Challenge. I am super excited about this new approach for me to getting motivated seller leads. I uh, am Jamil Damji, for those of you that are not familiar with me, the self-appointed king of wholesale and uh, have been doing this business for many, many, many decades. And I've been doing it without having to ever spend a dime in marketing. And uh, you guys are probably all aware that my primary methodology of getting out there and finding great opportunities is my relationships with real estate agents. I do a process called on market offers. I do another process called agent outreach. I also do a lot of co-wholesaling with wholesalers. And this has afforded me an incredible lifestyle, an incredible business where I can do anywhere from 60 to 80 transactions a month in my own businesses, uh, generating millions of dollars in wholesale fees. And I've trained thousands of Astro Flipping community members to do the same, to be able to leverage relationships, leverage real estate agents, leverage other wholesalers to get their hands on juicy deals. And this incredible thing has happened in the market over the last little while. And I'm sure many of you guys that are doing agent outreach and that are in the process of, of, of working with different wholesalers, you've seen that the market has changed and inventory has gotten really tight. And because of that, at Key Glee, my wholesale real estate operation, we have had to pivot and we've had to add new verticals of lead generation to our repertoire. And one of those has been direct to seller. And I'll tell you guys, it is killing. It is doing really well. Now, of course, we are still doing agent outreach. It is still my primary and my most lucrative way to get business and deals. Uh, we are still doing a lot of JV, a lot of co-wholesale. Many of you are using Key Glee to help you disposition your deals. And I appreciate that. And thank you for the business. And we love supporting wholesalers and we love doing business with all of you guys. Uh, but on top of that, in order to really make sure that we're maximizing our impact in this market and maximizing our dollars, we had to add some new verticals to our business model. And that is direct to seller. But I don't do direct to seller the way that everybody else does direct to seller. You guys know me better than that. I am not uh, the kind of person that follows the herd. That is not my style. I am uh, a completely uh, innovative human being. And this is the reason why I'm bringing to you guys one of the most incredible um, technologies and platforms uh, that I'd love to share with you all today. Now, I want to first ask everybody, where are you guys all from? If you uh, are in the chat right now, there's people still populating this. Uh, let me know what city and state you guys are in. Awesome. So we got a lot of uh, people from Florida. We got some Arizonans. We got some people from Cali in here. Beautiful. All over the place. You guys are joining us from everywhere. Really cool. Really great to see everyone in here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wow, we got Vegas, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Alabama, Dayton, Ohio. Someone from Calgary, get out of here. My goodness, my old hometown. I love Calgary, Alberta. Go have some poutine for me. Got some people from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We were just there. What a fun, fun city. Philadelphia, also beautiful. Dayton, Ohio, amazing spot. Welcome, everyone. I am really, 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 really excited about today's awesome challenge. Now, I'd like to hear from you guys, and uh, for everybody is in the chat right now, if you have ever done direct-to-seller, if you've tried driving for dollars, if you've tried cold calling, if you've tried sending out direct mail, if you've tried direct-to-seller, uh, I want you to put a D in the chat. Give me a D in the chat. Let's, let's hit, me, hit me with some D. Slap me across the face with it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ah, that's funny. Okay, so you guys have absolutely, absolutely uh, tried some uh, direct-to-seller before. Uh, and if you have been successful in direct-to-seller, uh, I want you to give me a double D in the chat. If you've been successful in uh, direct-to-seller, throw me with, throw me, hit me with a double D. Yeah. Amazing. So you've had some success in direct to seller. Perfect. And some of you have not had success in direct to seller. So we've had a, we had a lot more D's than we've had double D's. Um, and, it, you know, that's 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 pretty indicative of the model. 
uh, I, the reason for it typically is because uh, direct to seller can get expensive. And so a lot of people will end up spending their entire budgets and then they run out of money and they can't do any more. So they quit. Uh, that is the number one reason why wholesalers who start at direct to seller quit the business because they get in, they got a couple thousand dollars. They're like, okay, I got just, I got, I got a couple thousand dollars to do this. They spend all that money and nothing happens. And then their spouses are like, okay, well, uh, now what? I think you got to go back to work or I think uh, this isn't going to work. Or I told you it was a scam, right? You get all of this negativity and, and, you know, folks are, uh, they're very quick to tell you, they're very quick to tell you, uh, especially family members and friends um, that you've made an error, especially when you start draining the bank accounts. Right. And so um, this is uh, an absolute symptom of direct to seller. And so we are going to fix that. And so today guys in the Dr. Deal Junkie challenge, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to share with you how we have hacked the direct to seller model, how we've done it in a way where we've been able to not only increase our conversions, but we have taken our direct to seller cost per contract and we have made it, we've turned it from uh, uh, thousands of dollars per contract to hundreds of dollars per contract. You guys heard that right from thousands of dollars per contract to hundreds of dollars per contract. Now, before we start again, um, you, I want to try to get as many folks in the Zoom here as possible before we get into it. Uh, but I, I, I lastly want to know if you guys have an idea, what do you guys think the national average is for a cost per contract? Okay, how much does it cost for you to obtain a ratified contract for direct to seller across the country? Tell me your, your estimate in the chat, please. So we got 5,000, 3,000, 9,000, 10,000, 8,000, 15,000, a hundred dollars, Edward. Wow. 7,000, 6,000, 8,000, 5,000, a lot of, yeah, yep, yep, yep. You guys are, so you all know what's going on. I don't, we have the only delusional person here is Edward. Um, because he said a hundred dollars. That, that's okay, Edward. You probably just don't know. And I'm, I, I don't mean you're really delusional. I think you just, you know, probably just didn't know. Um, but yeah, no, there's a <laughs> uh, uh, hundred dollars. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if uh, you could get a deal done, if you could get a direct to seller contract for a hundred, for a thousand dollars, right? Uh, or so for a hundred dollars. Can we all guess in the chat what the national average profit is for a direct to seller deal. So how much do you make on a direct to seller deal nationally? What's the national average for a direct to seller profit deal? So we've got lots of we got a 40,000, 25,000, 12,000, 20,000, 20,000, 30,000, 10,000, 10,000, 1500. Man, Mike. 15,000, 30,000 12,000, 15,000, 30K, a lot, a lot of, yeah. So a lot of good, a lot of good answers here. A lot of good answers. So I will give you guys the stats, but I'm not going to give them to you right away because I want to get this challenge started. And you guys know me that I'm not going to get into the meat and potatoes of this stuff until we started off with a prayer. And the reason for that is I truly believe that anything and everything we want or need in our life will find its way to us through our source when we ask and take steps towards it. Now, guys, I know this is the internet and some of you are not gonna like this, but if you uh, are offended by this, do me a favor, please, and mute me for 30 seconds because I will do this anyways. But if you'd like to join us, here we go. Father God, we love you so much, Lord. Thank you for today. Thank you for opening all of our eyes and giving us breath, for giving us the minds to connect and communicate with each other. God, we are so grateful for that. Lord, we ask that you guide each of us to your purpose for our lives so that the steps we take are your steps, the words we speak, your words, the actions we take, your actions. God, we ask that you guide us to those individuals that will be of benefit to us, either through a financial gain or a lesson that we need to learn. But we also ask that you deflect us from those individuals that would waste our time or bring us harm. Lord, for any of our family members here that are in need of any additional understanding of the concepts that we will teach here today, we just pray for perfect clarity in their minds. And for anyone suffering through any physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual pain, we just pray for perfect healing in our lives. And Lord, it is with humble hearts 
And in your heavenly name we pray. Amen. All right. All right, guys. We are kicked off here now. It's official. The Dr. Deal Junkie Challenge is in full effect. So I'm going back to these averages here. We got 60,000. Oh, my God, Renee. Renee went. She went full. Um, she she went to the moon with the, with her guest there. So uh, interesting, right? The, we We all, for the most part, I can see that we all expect that you will make more money on a direct to seller deal than you will on an agent deal. And that is absolutely correct. You will make more money on a direct to seller deal than you will make on an agent deal. Uh, and I can tell you after having done thousands of transactions, right? I've, I've done over 6,500 wholesale deals in my career um, that for the most part, every one of my agent deals has been a smaller uh, assignment fee than I would be if I went direct to seller. So the national average for uh, direct to seller national average for a direct to seller cost per contract if you are doing it yourself okay and we're talking cold calling here we're not talking direct mail okay so i'm just talking cold calling i'm not talking direct mail okay the national average if you are calling yourself for direct to seller is thirty five hundred dollars cost per contract okay um so that's quite a bit of money if you 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 have to be able to spend $3,500, okay, in data and skip tracing in order to hopefully get a deal under contract. Now, that doesn't even mean that you're going to close that. Uh, you're, that doesn't even mean that you're going to make that. Uh, it just means that's what it's going to cost you to get one of those deals under contract, okay? Um, and that's, and that's, 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 pretty, that's pretty high, but that's less than what it would be for direct mail. The national average for direct mail, near $8,000. Can you believe that? Crazy, right? The costs, the costs are just getting in, incredibly high. Now, on the flip side of that, when you're talking profits, right? If we're talking about how much money can one make on a direct-to-seller contract, it's actually around $30,000, right? right? So that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good profit margin. Right, 30 grand. The national average for the profit margin for an agent deal is about $15,000. So you can see you can make double the money when you are working direct to seller. Now, the only thing is, is that we need to decrease how much it's going to cost us to get a contract, right? Would you all agree that if we could figure out how to decrease our cost per contract for direct to seller that all of our lives would be better. If we could agree on that, um, do me a favor and, and give me a, a thumbs up in the chat. All right. I like Edward. He's like thumb up. <laughs> He's, he probably can't find his, his um, emojis in his, uh, in his, wherever he's tuning in from. So I get it. Uh, but yeah, so if we could all figure out how to decrease our cost per contract on direct to seller, life would be incredibly better. I absolutely agree. And if we could get these $30,000 checks um, and we could get that contract down, that contract price down, you know, significantly, it would be like a game changer, right? So we're going to talk about that today. I want to give you guys a little bit of an overview of what we are going to be covering in this two-day challenge because I want you to be prepared. First, I just want to kind of go into the differences between uh, when, you call, when you're cold calling sellers versus when you're cold calling agents. It's a completely different uh, type of conversation. Um, also, we're going to kind of get into the symptomology of a motivated seller, right? Like what shows, what tells us that a seller has motivation? What, what specific um, symptoms are they uh, expressing, right? Like if you, you, are they, are they changing their addresses? Are they, um, you know, changing their phone numbers? Are they constantly missing their utility payments? Like what are the symptoms? What, what do we see uh, happen with a motivated seller that let us know that there's a good chance that this person is motivated? I want to get into the different types of leads because we have uh, different types of leads, right? There's, there's, Retail leads, which we all know uh, are, are not wholesale deals, right? If you're calling somebody and they've got um, a really beautiful house, right? They've got a really beautiful house and um, it's been, you know, 
remodeled and um, it, it's it, it com- there's no deferred maintenance or anything like that. It's just a beautiful home. Uh, is that's not a wholesale deal, right? We know that that's a retail deal. But the if you're a real estate agent, you can still mo- monetize a retail deal, right? You can list it on the MLS and sell it. There's also renter leads, right? There's there's leads where we know, hey, this house is not in uh, good enough shape to be a retail house. It, it doesn't have granite or quartz countertops or, you know, luxury vinyl uh, flooring or anything like that. But it's rent ready. It's beautifully, you know, maintained. It's clean. Um, you know, it's it's literally pristine. It's just a little bit dated, but a perfect renter property, the kind of property that a property management company or a small portfolio earner or a hedge fund would love to pick up, right? Um, and then there's the wholesale lead, right? And we know the wholesale leads are going to have uh, situational distress. They're going to have distress in the property. Like they're definitely going to have code violations. They're, they're definitely going to have HOA violations, potentially. Uh, they're going to have situations where their utilities get turned off. Uh, maybe they had magazine subscriptions that they have now canceled. Uh, maybe we ha- see that the homeowner has changed their phone number more than two times in the year. Like there's, there's things that go on in, uh, in a person's life when it is pretty, when it's, when there's a good chance that this person is going to sell their property at a discount. Okay. And so we're going to kind of dive into the differences between those three types of leads. We're also going to dive into this incredible platform that I've been using now and, and, and have brought into my entire fold. I've been beta testing with Astro Flipping students. I've been uh, letting the Keegley franchises and, and Keegley corporate office use it as well so that we can understand the utility here. And I can tell you the reports that I'm getting back are insane, right? Insane. There's just so much utility here. Uh, so much so that I'm going to show you how we're able to predict with, with, with fairly good certainty that a house is going to sell at a 16 X multiple. Okay. So I, I'm, I can tell you with certainty that, okay, there's a greater than 16 times chance that this house is going to sell over this one. Think of that. Okay. 16 X, 16 X. I'm not talking twice as likely. I'm not talking three times as likely. I'm not talking four times as likely or five times as likely or 15 times as likely. I'm talking 16 times more likely to sell than an, a different than an average house. 16 times. Okay, that's what excited me to start diving into direct to seller because I said, well, if I could cut cut my cost by 16, if I could if I could cut my cost 16 times, okay, I would I would absolutely add direct to seller into my world. There would be no way that I wouldn't do this, right? Because if I have a greater than a 16 times chance to get this house under contract, because all of these indicators are showing me that this house is going to sell in the next 90 days, I would be crazy not to call. Wouldn't you agree? All right. So I'm going to get into this with you guys. I'm going to show you how that works. But first, I want to kind of walk in um, and, and give you guys the overview of, of this mathematics that, I, that actually blew my mind, right? Because once I, once I figured this out, I, this is when I, I, I really got excited. Let me just see if you guys can all see my screen here. Is this possible? Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Um, and Bobby did not turn this on. There it goes. Okay. Perfecto. All right. Let's, uh, let's get in. So let's just say we're using uh, a platform like PropStream, right? We all know we all know PropStream. It's a industry uh, well known in the industry as uh, a great place to find lead lists, right? So, so if you are familiar with PropStream, um, put a P in the chat, please. So I'm a I'm a fan of PropStream, right? I they're they've been around in the business for quite some time. I know I'm always like you know I, I make fun and I talk stuff or whatever, but I, I like PropStream. They're they're a good company, owned by good people. They they've 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 done some good stuff out there. 
Um, but I, I always had a problem with going this approach because here's how it works, right? You you use a you use a platform like PropStream, and and here's how the math shakes out. So you're you're gonna pay like ninety nine dollars per month, okay? And they're gonna give you um, they're gonna give you ten thousand leads, okay? So you're gonna have to skip trace those ten thousand leads, and those and that's gonna be at fifteen cents per lead. So that's gonna cost you. $1,500. Okay. And you're going to be cold calling yourself. But now we know the national average is between 3,000 and 3,500 bucks for one of these deals. Right. So we also know that you're not going to get a contract in the first 10,000 leads. So you're going to need to download another 10,000 leads. And you're going to pay 15 cents per lead for skip tracing. And that's going to be another fifteen hundred dollars okay so now assuming it's you assuming it's you making all these calls you you're gonna have to have dialed out to roughly twenty thousand leads okay and in those twenty thousand leads you're gonna have spent approximately on and we're gonna be conservative here approximately three thousand dollars and that would give you one contract okay which is not bad which is you know again if you have the money, if you have the money, then this is this is a good way to to go with it, right? If you if you're if you're rich and you've got all kinds of money to spend on lead generation, I think that that's that's totally fair, okay? But what if I could show you that instead of $3,000, if I could get you lists, if I could get you leads that were 16 times better, Okay, that means that you could do one sixteenth of the work. You would need one sixteenth of the number of leads. You'd need one sixteenth of the cost of skip tracing. So if we're looking at $3,000 being the national average for a cost per contract for cold calling on your own, well, let's take that number and divide it by 16. And what does it get you? $187. $187. Think of that. Think of that. $187 versus 3000 This is why I got excited. Okay, this is why I got involved. This is why I said I have to, I have to test this because if this is true, if this is true, this changes the game. This changes the game for everybody because even my astro flipping community that I teach agent outreach to, agent outreach, agent outreach, agent outreach, agent outreach, even though this is what I'm telling them, this is what I'm teaching them, I would tell every single one of my astro flipping students that they have to add direct to seller, a little bit of direct to seller into their business because at this price, $187 per contract? You can't go wrong. You literally can't go wrong. Right? If you're making thirty thousand dollars, if you can make thirty thousand dollars on one deal and it costs you 187 bucks to get there, I mean, to me, that's that's insane. If you guys are jazzed up or interested or are completely shocked at what I'm saying right now, um, give me uh, uh, an S in the chat. Tell me you're shocked. All right. So y'all, y'all, I, I piqued everybody's interest in here. I, I, I see. Okay, cool. I, I did my job, guys. That's the end of the challenge here. I hope you guys all have a good afternoon and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, man, for a second, everyone's just like, wait, what? <laughs> what, is, what did he say? What's he doing? Uh, just, you're going to leave us like that? <laughs> you just. <laughs> Oh my God. I can't, I can't, I can't with myself sometimes guy. I'm, 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 uh, I, I just, I, I, I gotta be this guy. Um, okay, cool. So we're, we're all, we're all excited. I think, uh, I think this is, you know, incredibly, incredibly lucrative, incre incredibly fun. I want to introduce you to one of my friends, 
um, who's going to get us into um, uh, the meat and potatoes of this platform, because uh, truly, 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 this is where you get um, uh, a this really predictive data. OK, and 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 when I say predictive, I mean, they've created lead list scores. They've created lead scores on these on this data that tells us um, that this house has a 16 times more likelihood to sell in the next 90 days than that house or that house. OK, and Jenna Hoover, who is my dear friend, has been working on this technology. She's been working on this platform for quite some time. She's been with this organization for years. Um, I love Jenna. She is not only uh, just an incredible human being. She's a believer. She's somebody who sends me inspirational messages in the morning. And she's my true friend. Um, but not only that, she is also somebody that you guys might know from HGTV's Renovation Road. Uh, so she is, you know, an, another another uh, uh, TV star that, that uh, you know, of course, I've been on a television show, so she understands just how hard uh, life can be like that. Um, but she is just like one of the most incredible people because not only is she a real estate uh, individual who works in, in the, the, the prop tech space, she's also what she considers to be a residential redeveloper, right? She loves building relationships. She loves to restore historical houses in her hometown of Pennsylvania. She's buying, she's renovating, she's flipping, she's renting. She's doing so much in the space of real estate investing. So put your hands together for the very beautiful, the very incredible, the extremely intelligent Jenna, Jenna Hoover. Hello, Jenna. Well, hello. Thank you. I mean, oh my goodness. You're such a great cheerleader and and you're my friend and I'm your friend. So I'm I'm super excited to be here. And and you're the true TV star. So I just had some some little gig. Nothing like you. So well, thanks for having me. Of course. I'm I'm really excited to dive into this today. I'm, you know, again, when I you and I first met and you explained to me what we were doing here, um, you you know that I was skeptical. Uh Right, right. Would you would what would you say my initial response was like? I, I mean, you can be honest here and, and tell the people because they know me. They, uh, you know. I think you dodged my messages a couple times. Um, and then I just I just tracked you down because I I just needed you to see this. Well, you did. And 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 she did track me down. She got to me through uh friends, through mutual friends, through my team, and 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 she was right to do it. She was right to do it because she was you know, from her perspective, she thought, look, you know, Jamil is doing a great job with his community. And I and I appreciate that the reason he's doing it is because he wants his community to save money. He wants them to learn how to do deals without having to spend three thousand dollars on a contract. Um, I personally think that's too much money. I think when you spend three thousand dollars to get one deal and if that deal cancels, you're now out three grand and you get nothing for it. Right. And so for people who are becoming wholesalers, starting this business from scratch, starting this business from the ground floor, we have to be budget conscious. We have to think about this from the point of view of, I need to get this cost per contract down so low that somebody is not going to do one month's worth of business and then quit. Right. Because that sucks. That absolutely sucks. How many wholesalers do you think come into the business and then leave the business in 30 days? A lot of them. A lot of them, right? And so, and yes, Jesse, uh, Jesse in the chat said eighty percent. That is absolutely true. Eighty percent of you will start and quit in thirty days. Okay, eighty percent of you are going to start and quit in thirty days, which is which is pretty pretty crappy. And that's if you go direct to seller. Okay, that's if you go direct to seller. It's what we're finding is the is is the the data. The statistics are telling us this, and. You know, because I've been, I changed my life with this, right? I, I went from, I went from a bum to, ha you know, having my dream life, right? I, 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 I can eat whatever I want. I can travel wherever I want. I can live wherever I want. I can work from wherever I want. I have an incredible company. I've got incredible friends. Uh, life is good, right? And I know that I was able to get to this because of wholesale real estate. And I want to share this with people. Now, on the other side, right? When we're talking about going direct to seller, it's going to be different than doing direct to agent, right? There's no way um, that direct to seller and direct to agent conversations are going to be the same, right? So, so I want to kind of dump, I want to kind of, you know, jump in here and be completely transparent with people because I, people need to understand that you, these are going to be different phone calls. Okay. But they're, 
going to connect. They're going to be lucrative. And if I could show you how to do one sixteenth of the number of calls that you need to make in order to get a deal, that should interest you, right? Jenna, tell me from your experience, cold calling homeowners versus working with real estate agents, what do you think some of the differences are between those conversations? First off, I have, I have control and I'm the one that's driving the conversation. There isn't a disconnect. And I feel like a lot of times when you're working with somebody directly, people buy and sell to people. And I, and I feel like if I'm able to resonate with somebody, if I can, whenever you're going to go and see these people, it's almost like you, if they offer you to, to sit down at their table, you do it. And you kind of do that over the phone. It's, it's like, you can almost hear them start to tear up and it's like, you're virtually putting your hand on their hand and you're conveying a message to them. It's, it's always people first money second yep. and, and figuring out a way that we can monetize every lead because as we talk about this going through our first off, I guess we'll say if you're not ready to be an investor and you're not ready for your phone to ring, then obviously this may not be for you because this is what, because this is what makes you an investor. This is what gets your phone to ring. This is what gets things moving in your business. And this is the starting point. But when you're doing this, we're going to be talking to people. We're going to be reaching out to them, understanding them on their level. And we're going to be able to connect with them different than somebody who's representing us would be able to do. And with that connection, that's what separates you from a lot of the other investors out there. How do we separate ourselves from the other investors? How do we find the deals before them and yep. taking it to that level as well? But then really allowing ourselves to shine whenever that phone rings or we're calling that person. And I think this is how what brought you into the deal junkie platform in, in, in you know in itself, right? So so you know, you're a developer, you do renovations, you do buy and hold, you do restorations. Uh, you're you know incredibly talented at that, but you got into this world of prop tech, right? Because you understood that there was a better way. So explain to me a little bit about these data filters, because you know, I I I I understand, but I'm dumb. Okay. I'm 44 years old. I'm not a tech guy. I don't, I, even though I'm Indian, I'm not a coder. I'm not a, I'm not a tech person. I, I, I get it. I, I, I was supposed to either be a doctor or a tech guy, but I'm a comedian wholesaler. So I, I break the mold. I'm the black sheep or the brown sheep, if you would. So, so tell me, what are these filters about and how are they so good at predicting a sale? Well, I think a lot of times when, when somebody is looking for properties, it's like, where do I, where do I go? Do I go on this website, that website? Where do, where do I find all these properties? And if you had a, a one-stop shop that was basically like a Google, a personal Google search for all available properties ac across the country, if you could create that, and then on top of that, add all these different filters to where if you don't ever want to get a lead for a, anything less than a three bedroom, two bath house, we can do that. In addition to that, we have to basically, we have the ability to find what a motivated seller looks like. A lot of times when you're working with just properties that are on the market, you are just left with what you can find. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is find the people who are sitting there saying, you know what? I really need to sell this house, but I just don't know what to do. I don't know how to list it. I'm scared. I'm going through a tough financial situation. I'm embarrassed. I need a friend. And those are the people that we're targeting. And what we're able to do is really leverage all the different filters and find those people. Obviously, in my opinion, I feel like I have an obligation to find those people because they don't know what to do. They need my help and I have to be able to find them. But on top of that, I don't have all like you, I don't have all the time in the day to sit and just yeah. try to figure out and and send out marketing campaigns of 300,000 to different people because we all know less than 1% of those people are even going to sell anyways. So how do I figure out by hitting a couple different buttons, by doing a couple different things, by levering technology and sellability scores, how do I, how do I put all that together and hand it to myself on a silver platter to where I'm maximizing my time, I'm really, really decreasing my marketing dollars, and then therefore, really, I'm able to do more and more and more and, and really reach out further 
than just what my typical niche is. A lot of times people think, well, I only can do it this way. And we talk about like, when you do direct mail, you talk about a, mul a multi-touch campaign. Obviously a lot of us are going to know what that means, but really in marketing, it should be an overall marketing multi-touch campaign. Because what if we could direct mail somebody? What if we could skip trace them and contact them? We have their address. What if we go in and visit their property? What if we do all these different things or drive them to our website? And now we have a multi-touch campaign and really we just have the same person. We have touched them numerous different times. Like on top of your, your numbers and your stats you're giving, I mean, imagine the, the success rate if we're kind of taking all these different things. And this is what will set us apart than just having some agent contact somebody. This is us contacting them. And we're just like you, you're the face of your business. And I'm sure that if you make a phone call to somebody, it's going to be a different approach than just somebody who's acting on your behalf. It's just a different feel. Yeah, it is. And, and, and a, you're hundred percent, right. I, um, I, I, I like that. Uh, but I want to know more. I need to understand what, you know, how are you increasing predictability by 16 times? Because Jenna, like my, my when, when you and I started talking and we we're breaking down the math, right. Um, that's, that's where I stopped in my tracks because I'm like, okay, hold on a second. Right. The reason why I, I, I'm so negative about direct to seller. And I, and I, I have to just call it what it is, right? Comically negative, we'll call it. Okay. Um, but the reason why I'm so comically negative about direct to seller is because I know that $3,000, if, if, if the people in the chat today, there's 400 and something, 500 people here right now, if 500 people spent $3,000 and got nothing for it, nothing for it. And I taught them how to do that. I taught them, I taught them like all these other wholesale people that are teaching folks to do it, right? That don't have this. And they say, hey, go get a list of uh, absentee owners and, and skip trace that list and call them all, okay? It's going to cost you thousands of dollars and it's going to take you months and months and months. And if you can weather the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, and if you can weather the months and months and months and months, eventually you'll get a deal. Eventually you'll make money. And eventually you'll know that what I'm saying is true. Okay. Unfortunately, life doesn't work out that way. So what happens is they get discouraged. Life, you know, they get bills. Their spouse says you're, you're crazy. Um, there's all of these things, right? So how, 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 how are you increasing predictability by 16 times. How are you taking cost per contract down from $3,000 to 187 bucks a contract? What in the world is happening? Do you, can I share my screen? Are you, are yes. you ready for me to show I need it? to see this. <laughs> We're going to do the grand reveal. Let's and, go. And, and reading some of the, in the chat, I mean, people are saying they're exhausted, they're tired. And I, and and everybody, I mean, I, I, I can relate to that. And, and, and so this is going to be something that is going to be, a total game changer for you guys. So, and before we totally get into everything, my background was not real estate. I, first off, I'm an investor, just like you guys. I'm also a licensed agent in Pennsylvania, but my background was, my background was actually in radiology and I did computer things there, but I've always had a love for real estate. And I kind of took my geek, my geeky background and combined it. And this is how I get to be able to work with you guys. Paul so this, Duke, this is live. This is live. I don't do this stuff recorded. This is live. Okay. Don't ask again. <laughs> Sorry, what is it? Ahead, Jenna. They oh, were just sorry. asking if this is live or if this was. Oh, okay. Oh, I, th I thought you were telling me to like, shut no, up. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I just, I just. I was, was going to say, pull me off with one of those little canes. No, so no, this, you're... <laughs> this is what, this is what Jamil and I have been working on. And this is where I'm going to be able to show you this, this software is designed by investors for investors. And so the reason I wanted to give you guys that quick snapshot is I don't have a huge techie background, just like Jamil was talking about. My background was in the medical field. And if I can learn this and I can share it with you, any single person, and I invest in some of the poorest counties in the state of Pennsylvania. So if I can have success, and Jamil was talking about those different stats. And what I'm going to show you, I'm going to actually give you real life numbers of real deals that I have done and just to kind of put it into context for you. So as we walk into this system, this is this is our user interface, and we're going to go into our system. We're going to go into lead pipes, and we're going to go into our property leads. Now, this is where we have access. This is like our personal Google 
Google search for all available nationwide properties, 148 million properties right here at our fingertips. Now we can talk about all the different ways that we can find motivated sellers. And, and you, Jamil, you had talked about looking up absentee owners and basically getting a huge list and skip tracing them and essentially not having a way to filter or sift them. And right. that's, I mean, the thing is, and that's where you're going to spend a lot of your money, but what if we could basically take that list of absentee owners and click a button and say, okay, only show me the ones that have a very high sellability score where we're predicting the likelihood that they're going to sell in the next 90 days. And that's exactly the technology and the resources and the thing that you made available to everybody. So we are going to, you're going to notice we have nationwide access to all the different leads across the country. But you're going to see here that we have we have different um, credits. So we're going to have 10 credits. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to redeem them. And this is something that you guys will be able to see. I'm just going to go through what, this. What, so when you say so I can. So if I have 10 zip codes, OK, mm -hmm. let's just say that I I'm doing deals in Phoenix, in Florida, uh, in sorry, Phoenix, Tampa, Orlando, Miami and um San Antonio, but I, there's just certain zip codes in those markets that I like to work. I don't want to have to buy data in all of Arizona, all of Texas, all of Florida. There's just certain zip codes that I like. You're telling me that I can give you 10 zip codes in 10 different States. And I can, I can basically curate my own list without having to be in all those different markets and subscribe in all those different markets. Exactly. And you can find the leads in the entire country, not okay. just these in these 10 different zip codes. The, the What I'm going to tell you about the zip codes is we turn on an additional scoring feature that it gives us another additional way that we can search for those properties. So if I were to search for this zip code, this is going to be a zip code that's going to be in your neck of the woods. And we're going to mm -hmm. talk about this deal alerts coming up. We can come in here and we can see that I have over 12,000 different property leads in this area, which is great. So I can come in and I can do, you know, I can come in and say, just give me all the absentee owners. And in this situation, I would have to send out, a, do a direct or do a direct mail campaign or skip trace over 4,000 different people. And obviously this is going to work in, in any territory. So we can see, you know, we can look at all of our different properties. Now, if I come in here and I say, okay, now I can see all those different leads. But how do I turn on? How do I turn on a sellability scoring feature? So I'm going to select this. I'm going to add it to my cart, obviously. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back, and it's going to save this search for me. So I'm going to click on this area. Now I have all those twelve thousand different property leads. But now you're going to see that there's some bright color, and you're going to see there's these three different sellability scores. Now, what we do is we predict the likelihood of these properties selling in the next 90 days, and we predict it on a score of zero to a thousand, a thousand being the best on how likely we predict this property will sell at a retail or towards an MLS type of price range. The middle one for rental, this is going to be where we're predicting the likelihood that it will sell at potentially a discount more towards a landlord type of buyer. And then my absolute favorite is going to be the wholesale. So how likely in the next 90 days do we predict that this property will sell at a discounted wholesale type of score? Now, just to kind of explain AI, because I know sometimes when we hear AI, it's like, you know, it can go over our heads. And and also, that's great that we give this number, but how do we prove it to you? How yeah, do we, how, how, yeah, so, it, yeah. Maria so, B said, how did you decide on those uh, on those scores? Like, how, how do you how do you get that prediction? Where do you where do you? What are you basing it on? So, and I'm glad she asked because obviously it would have been awkward if I get to tell you and nobody wanted to hear about it. But so what we have done as a company is we have purchased over 40 years worth of real estate sales data. So every house that has sold in the country since the 1980s to now, every house that has sold, we own the financial data on every seller that sold their house. And we are looking at billions and billions of data points, like super invasive information, things like Jamil was mentioning, like what magazines do they subscribe to? And, and I mean, it can be creepy, creepy information, like how much money do they make? What cars do they drive? Did somebody pass away? Did they get a divorce? A, a ton of different, a, a ton of different data points. And then we're also looking at things in regards to their properties, things like how old is the house? Does it have a screened in porch? So many different things. And so then what we do, 
obviously history repeats itself. And so with every house sell, what we do is we, it's almost like we give symptoms to each of those different sellers. So this house sold, and these were the symptoms that led up to that person's house sell. So again, like history repeats itself. So if we have 40 years worth of proven sales data, we take that, we put it in, into our genetic algorithm, and then we have obviously all of today's data. So right. we can take, take all of today's people and look at 40 years worth of proven sales stats. And what we can do is then we give each property a sellability score on the symptoms that it has in relation to the people of the past. So what we can do then, if we look at a typical real estate list, something like this list right here, and we can do this in any part of the country. So we can select up to 10 different zip codes. And, and there, obviously we can talk about how they're interchangeable. But if we were to look at just a typical real estate list, on average, less than 1% of these people, just, just unless less than 1% will even sell their property in the next 90 days. Now, how do we basically take this list of people and how do we almost sift it down? And so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our sellability scoring section here. And then what we can do is we can change the number. So instead of doing a marketing campaign to 12 or 13,000 people, what we can do is we can come and say to our system, okay, give me all the people that have a score of 600 and above. So we're going to go from almost 12,000 different people to 2,500 different people instantly. Mm -hmm. Now, there are so many different ways that I can teach you guys how to find motivated sellers. Obviously, Jamil is the king of wholesaling. So it would be such a disservice if I would not be able to show you how to find motivated buyers as well. Because if we're getting all these leads, our phone's ringing off the hook, then what do we do with them? So we can talk about that as well. Maybe tomorrow, maybe today, depending on our time. But now we have this list of 2,500 different people. And I saw on in the chat, Edward was mentioning that he some of these leads could be expensive that he's using in the past, and he's having to go to the courts to find these. He doesn't even have to leave his house now. So, you know, we can come in here. We can yeah, say- let's, let's say I want my like minimum wholesale score to be like 600 or, or like 700 and my maximum to be, you know, 999. Because I like if I want to just, again, because somebody said, hey, you know, I- I, you know, I, I've subscribed to Privy and because, you know, of course I believe in agent outreach. I believe in agent on, on market deals. And so I think Privy is a phenomenal platform to use, but this is for, if you want to add a direct to seller vertical to your business. Okay. If you're already doing deals, you're making money. You, you, you know, it doesn't replace anything. This is a different type of lead generation guys. This is a different type of a vertical in your business. Look, in my business, I'd have agent outreach is one vertical how I get deals. Co-wholesale, so wholesaler outreach, another vertical on how I do deals. MLS offers, another vertical on how I do deals. And now direct to seller, another vertical on how I do deals. It's just another vertical. It's another piece in my business that I use. So if I'm spending a few hundred dollars a month on direct to seller, then I know I, that few hundred dollars a month is going to return one or two contracts. That's it. So it's just another vertical that I'm adding to my business to do to do deals. That's all. And why is it important right now? Okay, because if you are doing agent outreach and you're hearing from agents right now say there's no inventory. Okay, well, there there's some agents are saying that in some markets, it's pretty tough. Right. And so you, it's, I'm not telling you not to do agent outreach, still do agent outreach. You have to. That's going to be the basis of your business. But what if you could bolt on? doing a little bit of direct to seller. So if we go back to that, uh, your platform, Jenna, if you share your screen again, because I just want to see, like, if I could just get a small little list, if I could do a small little list in one, in one area, let's pull that back up. Mm -hmm. I don't know how your screen stopped yeah, sharing. I was getting but... it. I was getting okay. it. For you. Okay. My, my bad. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, okay. So, so, so show me the size of a list that's only 750 to 999 in sellability score. I want to see the size of that list. And it's also, it, it's not just in, 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 in very populated areas. Like I just picked a, another area too. So this would be an area in Ohio and Cleveland. So if I pick something like this, you can see, again, it's still, it's a little bit smaller of a list, but it's not necessarily... It's not so much the the quantity, it's the quality. The quality, right. Because so, I here, here's the deal. I would only want a few hundred leads because again, skip tracing is like 10 cents to 15 cents a lead, right? And so if I can, if I if you can give me a list that's only two or three hundred people 
that I have to skip trace. But I know that those two or 300 people have a high sellability score. Then I wouldn't even bother calling anybody else. I would just call the high scoring leads. So just to kind of explain some of the things I know when you were talking earlier, you were, you were such a tease to us when you were saying the 16 times. So I'm going to explain to everybody what you were talking about, just so they can see kind of the magnitude of what you were mentioning. So okay. if we come in here and you're going to see, I have over 11,000 different properties. We can come in here and say, okay, system, give me a score of 700 and above. Now it's going to take my list and it's going to significantly drop them down. So we have almost 400, but we can go, we can go even further. We can say, give me 800 and above. Now, again, this is going to be dependent upon your market. You might be in a tiny little town and you may say, well, I only have 10 or I only have 15. And I'm going to kind of share with you a story whenever I've done different campaigns in the past, but now we have it narrowed down to 186. But if we even want to be even more, yes. more adventurous and we want to be, um, you know, more laser focused in, we can, let's say we want to do 900 and above. So we went from over 11,000 different people where we, remember less than 1% of those people were even, even considering selling. Like some may have just bought their house. Some may have just, you know, they're happy where they're at. It, I mean, it, we just have a list of people and, and that's great. We have a list, but I want to find the motivated seller list. And so what I do is I tell the system, give me all the people that have a score of 900 and above because a thousands are highest and whatever zip code, whatever one you select, you have 10 different zip codes that you can turn that sellability scoring on. And then what we do is now we have gone from 11,000 down to 109. So first off, our list is very, very small now. So we're able to really significantly decrease our marketing dollars. However, when we have a list of, of 900 and above, we go from that less than 1% of the people selling in the next 90 days to a 16.3%. So what that means is because as a company, we do look back analysis because again, everything is data. So there you can't you can't mess up data. You can't you can't fudge data. And so what we do as as a company is we do look back analysis where we pull our own data national or nationwide. We wait 90 days and then obviously we have sold data. So what we do is we cross reference and see what did we predict and what did, what did, what actually sold. And as a nation, we have a nationwide average of 16.3%. So what that means basically in English is if we have 109 people on this list of 900 and above, most likely between 16, 16 of 70, them are going to sell. They're going to sell. I mean, if there may be 20 on this list. There may be, you know, there may be our, our average is 16.3. And so if we have a list of, of 16 point the six over 16 people on this list of a hundred, we have a really, really good chance of these people calling us back. I mean, whether they sell to us, I mean, hopefully, and again, and that's, that's one of the, the perks of us personally reaching out to them. We're going to be marketing to them, calling them, potentially putting door hangers, all the different ways that you teach them. But now we have such a high, high, um, a high predictability of, of predicting these different people. Now, if we were to take something like this and combine it with our deal alerts, this is something I, I kind of minimize that screen. And this is something our latest and our greatest. Now, when you look at any one of these different lead types, if you look at our list, so again, you can hover over them. It will define all these different terms. You know, we can see what is a high equity property. What is obviously what is delinquent tax activity? You can figure out what a lot of these are. But if you look at all these different properties on this or all these different lead types, other than our active listing, everything on our list, these are all unlisted, unadvertised properties. So AKA off market properties other than our active listings. So what that means is we are basically, we have access to all of these off market properties. Now, if we turn on our deal alerts, let's say that this is a search that we love. We can save this search. We can obviously do our marketing, get their phone numbers. But what happens if tomorrow happens and there's two more people that popped up on this list? Obviously, we want to be notified, and that's exactly what Deal Alerts does. It gives us the ability to be notified the instant that something, and I want to say hits the market, but remember, they're, most of them are off market. So as soon as it hits our database, we are instantly notified, and that's just phase one. So our phase two that's going to be coming out, you can actually set up different permissions and privileges for your system where you can say, go ahead and send out that marketing on, me, on my behalf. Go ahead and send out that piece of direct mail. So not only are you literally 
getting notified, but now you're shooting out your marketing before everybody else. And a lot of these people, like I had mentioned, a lot of these are unlisted, unadvertised properties. A lot of times they're sitting there thinking, I need to sell this property, but I just don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. And, and just to kind of put it into context, when our, when we first started leveraging our artificial intelligence, yeah, because somebody asked, how long have you guys been tracking this to, to get the, you know, to, to see if it's working or not. Right. Cause it's a great question. How, how long have you guys been looking at this in order to find out if this is actually 16% or 16 times more predictive uh, over four years now? And so it's constantly, and just like AI, it's constantly getting better and better and better. And it's constantly relearning and we're constantly getting more and more data feeds. So it makes our, makes our sellability score even higher. Cause in the beginning it was a very small percentage and then it crept up and it kept going up and it gets higher and higher each time. And so when it first came out, I said, I'm kind of like you, I'm, I can be skeptical. And I said, I'm, I'm going to see, I'm going to see a little bit about it. And I had a very, very small list in my, in my area in Pennsylvania, there was 59 different people on my list. I did a very simple two touch campaign. I spent $82 on the campaign. And so I just sent out two postcard. I did a middle sized postcard. And after it went out, I had 13 phone calls back. 13. And I know that that is like outrageous. I mean, cause it, there, I don't have a lot of investor competition. There was about seven properties that were worth kind of my time that I actually looked into. One of them I got them, got as a real estate listing. Another one, the person, the things that people said, it was just, I wish I would have recorded it. Cause they were like, we were just having pizza the other night and we were thinking, what should we do with this house? And then your postcard arrived. Like it was so perfect. And the woman, she's like, I, my husband works out of town. I don't want to have this, this rental property. I ended up negotiating. I bought it subject to my all in price was like $314 every single month for her insurance, for the, the mortgage, all that stuff. And I rented every single month for $750. So every single month that I, from a campaign I did years ago, just to see if it worked. And I spent $82 on that campaign. I make over $400 every single month. We just did a, a cash out refi on it. We just pulled money out of that property and refinance it with bank financing. So the thing is, is that the people that we are targeting, they, we, we don't, when I just want to kind of put it into context, when we look at some of these different people, like we can click on any one of these different, any one of these different sellers just to see the power. Actually, I'm going to go back and I'm going to pull um, your, your neck of the woods here. Yeah. Let's go in my neighborhood. Yeah. 85018. Yeah. So eight. So, so let's, let's add that. We'll have to add that. We can add that one. So you said we want to do eight, was it eight, five, zero, one, eight. 018. So whenever we, I'm just going to grab this here. I'm going to add this one to my account. So, all right. So when we're in this area then, okay. So we can click on any one of these people. So let's go in, you know, we, let's, you know, let's say yeah, we let's go, let's go, let's go 800 to 900. Okay. Let's go, let's go. Oh, eight, so. go I want to see if the, I want to see if this, this, my old ass neighbor is pops up here because he's ready to die. I'm sorry. Huh? That's terrible. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Sorry. Well, he's ready to sell his house. He's ready to sell his house. Yeah. Um. So when we look, and again, there may be some of your areas where you put an 800 and you only get 23. <laughs> so again, it's, we have the, the 23 highest properties that are in this area is the way to look at it. So when we look at this, we can click on any one of these different properties. So if, if we wanted to I'm just grab this one. And a lot of times we don't know why they're on our list. The information that we have is so invasive that legally we can't tell you why they're on the list. We can just oh. give them a sellability score. Whoa. Yeah. Just, okay, I mean, hold because, on a second. So, okay, but it's legal. You're what you, it's legal. how you're pulling. Okay, so it's like Facebook, right? Okay, who who's th who's ever wondered? Or you guys have all said this. You think, oh my God, Facebook is listening to my conversations because I'm, you know, I was talking to somebody, and about you know, uh, I want. Um, uh, Carmex. I just said it because it's here. I, I like lip balm, this Carmex lip balm. Um, and then all of a sudden you're scrolling and then you see an ad for Carmex lip balm. And you're like, how the hell do they know that? Well, it could be because of the, some of the things I was searching prior. It could be because the, some of the things that I'd been looking at. There's so many reasons why I could be predicted to buy Carmex next, which is why they're showing it to me in my feed. Is that a little bit like what you guys are doing right now? Are you are you in, in, in like literally building a pixel around what a house is? Exactly, because we own all of the data on everybody financially. So what that means is, I mean, 
if you don't pay a credit card, you don't think that that credit card company could sell your data or um, that you can find out what magazines people subscribe to or the age of people's houses or if somebody died. But if there was a way to basically put all those different data points together and basically create a almost like a snapshot of that person. And then if you were to know, okay, well, they're delinquent on this, they're delinquent on that. Most of the time in these situations that we've seen in the 40 years worth of proven history, that that person typically will sell within the next 90 days because of how their life is going to go. And that's exactly what we're able to do. Yes, it is very invasive, but obviously it gives us the ability to reach out and help these people. Yeah, we're not we're not weirdos, guys. Like it's one thing if you're looking at this so that you can, you know, um, take advantage of somebody or do something or like, you know, this is not we're actually we know these people are in financial distress and somebody's set up there. I hate it when I see a house in my neighborhood go up for sale and I didn't get to it before they put it up. Like this is what this is how you stop that from happening. And it's not about being, you know, it's not about being predatory, guys. This is about being predictive. This is about making sure that you get the opportunity before somebody else. That's it. Because what's going to happen is if we know this person is 16 times more likely to sell, what does that mean that they're likely to do? Call a realtor. They're 16 times more likely to call a realtor and list that property. How many real estate agents do we have in the chat, by the way? If you're a real estate agent in the chat, give me an R. If you're a licensed agent, tell me, give, tell us that you're here. Okay. Keep going. And, yeah. All you if, licensed agents. And if you look, I, I can combine it. So if I wanted to say, show me all the ones that have the high, the high sellability score, but show me all the ones that are active listings. There's none. So what that means is these are all off market properties. So this is before they have got to that point. You have the opportunity to get there first. It's like the first kid at, at the playground. Like you get first pick of the swing, everything like that. But when we look at these different people, we don't know why some of them may be obvious. Like sometimes we can see they're upside down. Um, but sometimes when we look at them, we may say, well, they have high equity or um, it doesn't, or some of them may own their properties free and clear. When you look at, when you see this person, they own it free and clear. They bought it in cash, but what's going on. We don't know what's going on with that person financially, but our system does. And again, the best hmm. thing that it does is says, here is the sellability score, but you can click on any one of these properties. We can see all the behind the scenes information like bed and bath count. We can see the square footage. Oh, look at this guy. So th look at this house right here. Okay. So, so the sellability score shows us, go back, that, that retail. So if you're a licensed agent, okay, a licensed agent, th this scores 889 out of 1,000. This wouldn't be, if you're a licensed agent pitching, calling these people, would you pitch them a wholesale? No. Would you go to them and pitch them 60% on, 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 of ARV? No. You're going to call them and you're going to say, look, I assume that your property is in really good shape. I assume that you guys are looking to get top dollar out of this, uh, out of your sale. I can do that. I'm a listing agent. Let me let me get to work for you and show you how I can absolutely crush your listing because you know that there's a greater likelihood that they're going to be a retail listing. So you can tailor your pitch. Now, if you're not a licensed agent, how many of you guys in the chat right now are, are property owners and you hold rentals? If you hold rentals, Give me, uh, um, I don't know, give me an H. If you're holding rentals in the chat, give me an H. All right, so we got we got people who are holding rentals in the chat. Explain that to me, Jenna. How do we know that this could be a potential rental, a, good, a potential portfolio deal that we can get some equity in? Um, we could look at it based on the score, but obviously when we reach out to that person, so when we look at this property, we're integrated with Google Maps. Okay. So I can click on this and I can virtually go there if I wanted to. So I can get a feel for my subject property. I can kind mm. of walk around the neighborhood and you know get a good feel of that individual property. And again, it's going to be based on the information that I find. So as I scroll down, I can see all the behind the scenes. And this is we can see this data on any any property I put in. It's not just the ones that I have my sellability scoring turned on. It's any property I can see this data. So I can see how long somebody has owned it. And again, like obviously our, 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 what we call this is Dr. Deal Junkie. So we are literally 
looking at the symptoms and figuring out, okay, what, what do we recommend as the remedy or how do we fix this person? And so we can see their mailing address, the year it was built. We can see things like taxes and zoning and parcel ID and all this information on this property. Then we have these two different, very powerful sections. We have the equity section, and then we also have our, our valuation. This is our AVM, which is our automated valuation model. And this is basically the value that we're placing on the property. Now it doesn't take into account the current condition. So if this property is sitting there burned to the ground, right now our technology does not tell us that, but at best what it does is gives us the, the local sales in the area, the age, the condition, things like the age of the, of the property, all the different surrounding circumstances. And it gives us a, a, uh, an automated valuation model. Now, when we look at this number and then we can potentially see what that person owes on it, it gives us our game plan. It lets us know what we have to offer, what we could offer. And then it's gonna be based on that person's level of motivation. Like Jamil, you're so, so slick at how you communicate with people and finding out the right information and figuring out what the best approach would be. And a lot of these calls that we're gonna have we're going to be able to figure out a way to monetize every single one of them because we know that these people need to sell or have to sell or in a situation that they would potentially want to sell. We can see all their financial history on the property. So we can see this on every property. So we can see when they bought it for how much did they pay. We can see their lender. We can see their loan information. And we can see all of that right here from our system. So it gives us the ability. And also, you know, what we can do when we look at any of these different properties, Properties, you're going to see that there's going to be, um, you know, the different numbers here that we could potentially, you know, we can see what we would potentially offer on these different properties. So we can see their loan to value ratio. So once we communicate with these people and we can get an idea of what they owe, then we can figure out what our exit strategy would be. Because if somebody obviously owed what it's worth, and that would determine that would change different things. But but um, I was going to go in and kind of show some of the other powerful lists, Jamil, or if you wanted to kind of. Um, yeah, I got a couple of questions I want to kind of get into because, uh, again, you know, uh, I, 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 my audience is going to be my, like me. Right. And they're going to they're going to want to uh, really look, you know, behind the screen. And so how do you get like a sellability score of, uh, or a retail score of like 890 and then a wholesale score of like 860? When they're both high like that, what does that tell us? Um, it just tells us so, and we actually, I think we may even be able to pull one of our um, com one of our company owners in as well if he wanted to kind of explain some of that as well. But there's the way that we look at it is different factors based on the person financially, based on their certain circumstances. What, what we do also, in addition to looking at the the um, all the forty years worth of data. What we do is we look and see not only what were the symptoms of that person and when they sold that property, but we also look at, did they sell that property at a discount? So not only, so, and, and that's some of the things. So, okay, these person had these symptoms and then did they sell it at a um, X amount of price point or what did they end up selling it for? So we look at those details as well. And that's how we're able to determine, okay, this one would most likely sell more at a retail price range because it's taking into account things like, what do they owe on that property? Do they have to sell it at a retail? The trends in the past, is it more of a landlord type of market? What are the, what is the neighborhood like in that area? So there's a lot of different, a lot of different factors, but also, you know, how, how quick do they need to sell this property? You know, a lot of times we're looking at their financials and we're able to see, well, maybe this person's in a pre-foreclosure scenario. Maybe this person's property is set to go to auction coming up. So we're going to know that they're going to need to be selling it more in a kind of a motivated type of manner, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, I want to ask, you know, compared to PropStream, because the question was here, other than the sellability scores, is does PropStream have all of this? Does PropStream have all this? Yes. Uh, I would probably say no. No, uh, I, I can I, I can <laughs> more than probably say it, guys. It's a completely different, completely different thing, right? So again, lots of love to PropStream. They're great, great company, but it's, it's just the data, right? It's just the list. So there's nothing has been filtered. Nothing has been curated. What do I mean by curated, okay? One of the reasons why I've been successful as a wholesaler in the dispositions model is because I curate the opportunities for specific buyers. Meaning we 
are so good at building our buyers list. We're so good at predicting what our buyers will buy. We know where they buy, what they buy, what the product is like, what kind of renovations they do, what their maximum entry prices for a property, what their typical exit prices for a property. And I have all those data points that I know. And when I put a property in and it matches more of those data points than, than not, it tells me send this property to Jack because this is what Jack buys. Okay. So now when I understand that, and that's what we do at Keegley, when Keegley can do that, it curates the opportunities for my buyers. What does that do for my buyers? That means that I'm not sending my buyers junk. That means that I'm not sending my buyers deals they wouldn't buy. That means I'm not inundating them with excess communication. I'm only showing them opportunities that would interest them. That's curation. What we're doing here is curating the lists. How we curate them is through these data points, some of which Jenna is able to tell us about, some of which she'll go to prison if she does. And because of these data points, we are curating the sellability, either retail, wholesale, or rental, so that you're not overspending, you're not overpulling, you're not wasting time. If you're using VAs, for instance, to cold call for you, would it not make more sense to have them call 100 people instead of 1,000 people uh, or in, have them call 1,000 people that all had a high wholesale sellability score? What would be the result of that day's worth of work versus just handing them a high equity list and say, go? That's what I'm talking about here. That's the difference, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to frame this in your guys' heads because you're Instead of looking for how is this, look, this is, this is what it sounds like to me, okay? It's like if I go to McDonald's and I buy a cheeseburger and I look at that cheeseburger and I say, it's a cheeseburger. How is this different from my In-N-Out burger? Well, it has two patties. There's meat there and cheese, but one of them tastes like a butthole and one of them tastes like heaven. So... How is it different? Well, it's curated because it's better. It's got better, fresher ingredients. It's got better, fresher, made by better and fresher people. It's just a better burger, right? It's a better burger. It's 16 times more delicious than this hamburger that I get at McDonald's. So I'm just trying to give you guys the analogies here so that you understand. Look, yes, okay, prop stream. I'm, I don't know how this just all of a sudden became that prop stream was the cheeseburger that tastes like a butthole, but it's not. So what I'm saying is that this is what we're comparing, okay? This is what we're comparing here. It's two completely different things. Does this make sense to you guys? Because I, I, I don't want to have to keep, I don't want to have to keep reiterating this because it's like I, I feel bad. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm being mean, and I don't want to be mean here. I just want you to understand the difference between the things, okay? And. I'm sorry, my analogies. I'm, I have a comedic background, so I say things that may not be. I should just stop. Should I get, I'll, I'll bring out the cane and pull you off the side. I might, I, I might. Um, but, but to kind of answer that question, we can do the things that they can do, but we also can do things that they can't do, which is kind of what we're, I was basically showing. Like if I wanted to be able to pull a list of, of absentee owners in my area, I definitely can. If I wanted to be able to look at all of my active listings, I can. And if I want to be able to go as far as say, show me all the ones that have been on the market for 120 days, I can do that. I can click on any one of these different properties. Just Wait, hold like on a second. Are you telling me that you guys do that with on market stuff as well? Yes. But but also we do the uh, the sellability score as well. So there's so many different ways. Whoa, 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 save wait, wait. as many searches so as one. I, I didn't have a single clue that this was something you guys did. Are you so you're talking about MLS listed because one of my one of my most lucrative ways to find deals is going after houses that are like 90, 120 days on market um, that that are stale, that that I have to go in and look for signs of motivation from the listing, you know, the way that they write the listing, how many times they've reduced price, um, you know, th things like that. Right. That's how I'm kind of figuring out the. I guess I'm making my own sellability score or my own negotiation negotiation ability score. I don't know. I'm making things up now, but you know what I'm saying? So, so wait, you're telling me that you guys do this with on markets? 
Yeah. And then we could come in here and we can say, give me all the ones that are 120 days. So we can see now I have 178. I can even go and say, just give me the individuals or if you wanted only the businesses or if you wanted to only look at the bank owner, or any sort of banking or financial institutions, governments and trust. So you have so much flexibility. If if you guys are sitting there and maybe you're a newer investor or maybe you're kind of dabbling in this and you're not quite sure what you're looking for or um, who your target audience is, this is the opportunity to do it because this system, you can be picky. You can find exactly what you're looking for. If you're a, an, uh, an agent sitting there and you say, like, first off, if you're an agent and not having this, like, this is what will set you apart from all the other agents in your brokerage. Nobody else is going to have something like this because you can find all the people that need to sell their property or have a high likelihood of selling. And you can literally send them a piece of direct mail. You can skip trace them and call them. And you have access to these people on a silver platter. And we can come in and, and we can click on any one of these properties. And then we can see the stats, you know, bed and bath count. We can see things. It's an active listing. We can see how long it's been on the market. Not only do we have their contact information, but we would have the agent contact information as well. So we can pull all that up. Up. And, and every one of these searches that we do, we can save them. So we can have 10, 15, 20 saved searches. So every time I come into my system, I'd say, just give me all the AI scores that have whatever, you know, we can say, uh, you know, 800 and above or whatever you want to do. And we can hit, we can have that as a save search. Or you can say, give me all the people and, you know, in Phoenix. And what we can do is we can come in here. And this is one of my favorite lists to target what we can do is we can say, all right, so we can leave everything wide open. So we can we can have every all of our parameters open, obviously, assuming that you you purchase all the different type of, um, you know, if you're okay with single family or multifamily, we have this more tab. And this is where you guys can get really, really laser focused and find these motivated sellers because we have to put ourselves into a mindset of what does a motivated seller look like? What are the symptoms if I'm not leveraging my artificial intelligence? Now I can still I, I, I can still do my my sellability scoring. I can still do that. But what I can do is I can come in here and I'm going to have a, a lot of different sections where I can look at like loan to value, the year it was built, the loan maturity dates. We can look at sell price. We can look at rental estimates in an area. So a lot of that, you know, if you're looking for properties that have a certain rental price point, but I'm going to kind of skip through here and you'll notice we have last notice date and auction date. And this is in regards to pre-foreclosures and foreclosures. Okay, because we had people asking, does it do pre-foreclosures? Because they hear pre-foreclosures is where you get good deals. Well, so it does pre-foreclosures pre on, on steroids, essentially. Oh yeah. So what we can do is we can say, okay, system, when was the last time all 381,000 of these people, how do we sift through that? And when was the last time they received a notice of default that they were delinquent on paying their mortgage? Any of the people within the last three months, now we have 179 that went from 300 and some. Now we, again, we can click on any one of these people. We can see all the information when their last notice date, you know, we can be a little bit further. We may be able to, we can go to last month. Sometimes we have a smaller list just because, um, you know, everything's being put into our system. So sometimes, you know, it, you know, we have um, a smaller number here. So 16, and then to take it to the next level, we have last notice date, but we also have auction date. So we can say, all right, these people have kind of passed the, the, the point of pre-foreclosure. Their property is already set to be auctioned. So we can come in and say, all right, system, give me all the properties that are going to auction in the next three months, 184 people. Now, again, you can click on any one of these. We went from over 300,000 different people in Phoenix, and we basically said, show me all the ones that they're going to auction. They haven't gone to auction yet. They're going to auction. So we can see all these dates. This is going to be November 22nd, October 5th. And again, like for us to be able to have access to all these people, you can go in and say, just, I only want to work with individuals. If that's your, your way that you do things, or you may say, you know what? I only like single family properties right now. I don't want to do multifamily. You don't have to, you know, you can come in here and now Hold on, wait, you got multifamily in here too. Yeah. So we can do multifamily apartments. If you want to do land and only land, or if you want to do mobile homes, you can do that. You can search for anything that you're looking for. And we have that data. So was there, 
I, I don't, I didn't know if you were adding. No, to I'm that. sorry. Okay. I'm just stunned at the moment right now. I'm <laughs> okay. Of, I can't see you. All I see is my screen and I heard. No, silence. it's okay. I'm just sitting here. Like, I'm like, <sighs> okay. How does this work in non-disclosure states? There's gotta be something you guys, you, where did you drop the ball? How about non-disclosure states? There's gotta we be can, some, we can still pull it. So, you know, if, you know, we can put in, you know, let's, let's go to, uh, let's say Dallas. All right. Look at, let's look at Dallas. Okay. So I'm just going to pull Dallas and we'll just grab, grab a property. So let's see if we can pull some information here. So Dallas, I assume it's a non-disclosure state from what I remember, you know, we can, you know, pull all the information in here. You know, we can see it's a, um, it's a four bedroom, two bath property. You can see it's a multifamily. And again, it's going to be some of them. We may not have, um, as much information, but in most situations we're going to have, um, pretty comparable information in the non-disclosure states. So, Are you pulling directly from MLS and non-disclosure states? Um, let me see here. So let's go to active listings. So I'm in Dallas. I see that I have 771 active listings. We can, let's see if we want to go to 120 plus days. Let's just grab this person. Um, we can see their house has been on the market for 144 days. My goodness. We can scroll down. Um, I can see all the, their loan information, when they bought it, how much, who their lender is. And I'm in Texas. So, so yes. Um, um, so Okay. All right. Um, how about creative finance? So what if I'm looking for properties that might be underwater, um, but have low interest rates on them because I want to collect some rentals right now that I, you know, I want to buy some houses that have two, 3%, um, you know, mortgages on them because I know that that's an asset class. Even if the house is underwater, I know that a 2% mortgage right now is an asset class. Can you show me that? See, and that's probably something that we're going to need to work on together. Um, and, and you can claim that you created it um, as far as their interest rate percentages. Okay. Um, don't think that that's something that we can see right now, but I would. But can you tell me when the mortgage was, was generated? Um, I can, I don't know. I don't believe I have a, a filter for that, but we have the data so we could create that and I can make a note and that could be something that we could easily do or have a, um, in the future, we're going to be having, we're going to be having some really, really phenomenal up, updates that we're going to be doing as we go. But these could be, I would say that if you could give me a button, percentage. if you could give me a filter that, that shows me that, uh, you know, if, if a mortgage was originated, um, between like 2018 and 2021, my goodness, uh, that would tell me that e almost everybody in there would have a two, three, four percent mortgage. Well, I can look at the last sell date so I can do a custom range when it was sold. I mean, that could be a, an alternative. I also can look at the loan maturity date so I can look at properties that their loans are coming due in the next however many months, two months, three months. Because, again, we're trying to find different ways of finding a motivated seller and a motivated seller could also be somebody that their loan is coming due. So they either have to refinance it or sell it. So that could be somebody who is motivated to sell. So we could look that way, but that's a really good point to put in their interest rates or, um, you know, the actual loan information to search for that. We're going to be putting in some other, um, some other options as well. But, um, but unfortunately, unfortunately for that one, right. The second, that's something that we would be working on with you on that. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely game to help. I did help you guys with uh, the comping technology in here. So people are asking, do you comp in, in deal junkie? And yeah, we can. Um, and you, they actually built it based off of my appraisal rules, which, you know, of course uh, you're welcome. Um, but, uh, but let's, 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 uh, let's see how that works. Show us how easy it is to comp. Yeah. So any property that you want to grab from the list, so we can, we can grab a property. So I'll just grab this one. So again, you know, it's going to actually, I'm going to grab one. I put some different ones in my list here, just so, um, so these are some different ones. We'll grab this one. This is, I know I saw a lot of people were in Florida and this is a, a property that I was just kind of playing around with earlier today. So the, the cool thing about the system too, is you can put any property into your system. So you can come in here, you can add a property and then see all the stats, just like we did. It's not just the ones on our list that you can pull all the information on because you can go into public, public info. 
you can come in, see all their stats, again, the same information. Um, but also whenever you're in, in those areas, so you can go over. So I'll kind of just walk you through how you can do it. So we can go into our lead pipes. We can go into property leads. Again, I'll, I'll actually, I'll just do it with the Phoenix area because that way you guys are all comfortable with it. So you're going to come in and then yeah, we let's, can- I'll give you an address, yeah. 4451 East Earl Drive. Let's comp it. Um, we'll see. Okay. So let me go back here. So you said it was four, four, five, one, five, one East Earl drive. East Earl, Earl with two L's. Yep. That one right here. Yep. yep. All right. So as I come in here, it's going to give me all the info. I see this one and I can go look at it. So, you know, I can get a feel for the neighborhood. Um, looks like we have some, some shrubbery there. Um, but again, you can walk around, you know, get a feel for it. We can see it's a three bedroom, three and a half bath. We can see the square footage and you're going to see here comparables right there. Again, we can go down through and see all the information, but we can click on comparables. And what it's going to do is it's going to launch my comping tool. Obviously you teach everybody how to, how to pull comps, but the goal would be to compare as similar a property as, as our subject property. Now, if we have a three bedroom, three and a half bath, we can come in here and tell the system, okay, give me, um, was it not? Let me do that. We can say, I don't know why it's, let me refresh that here. Um, we can say, give me all the three. I don't know why. I don't know if maybe because mine's a, a demo here. It's not letting me click on it, um, but you should be able to click on, you know, a three bedroom. You, know, you would change those. Oh, there we go. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's my internet, but then you can change your distance if you want to. So if you want to go a little closer, to it, you want to go further out. You can, um, you can change your square footage to, to mimic your property as much as possible, as well as the locks of the lot size. And we can change by the sale date. So if you do a six month or a three month or a year, I usually don't see anybody go over a year, but if you want to, the sky is the limit. Now we can come in here and if, if I have a single family, obviously I can turn all these off, making sure that it's as similar of a property. And then we can even see active uh, and pending comps on here because that way, obviously that's our competition and we want to make sure. And then we would. And, and, and so pending that also then tells us that they're direct to MLS because you wouldn't have pending if it's not direct. So yeah, that sorry. Answers the question right there. My, uh, my list here decided to, to finally um, <laughs> update with my 19 bedroom count. So, um, but we would hit search and then it would give us all of our different properties. So when we're in this area here, we can see all the different sold ones. Now, you can, the map is interactive. So we can see here's our subject property. We can click on any one of these. We can do the Google walkthrough. We have a direct Google link as, as well. So you can click on any one of these and see what these subject properties look like so that you can, it will take you directly to Google. So you can see images. If it's been listed, you can kind of walk around that property because obviously we want to make sure ours is as similar as possible. So you can click on the map. You can click on um, over here on the side, but just for the sake of our demo, let's just pretend that um, maybe this one was a good comp and I'm just kind of just showing how to do it quickly just to maximize our time here so let's just pretend that maybe this one was a good comp and as you click on these you can see that this number it will fluctuate you know we can click on maybe this one and again I'm not pulling the you know and we could spend more time on this maybe tomorrow like pulling actual comps but just to kind of walk you through how the actual comping engine works but the nice thing is then we have this uh, download report and what it does is it it actually puts together a really nice PDF document. And then what it and what we can do is we can say, okay, here's our subject property. We can say, you know, here's our um, after repair value. Obviously, I didn't like no, that's cool. on the it's yeah. on the money actually. 1.8. I just had it appraised and that's what it came back at. <laughs> really? Wow. So you should have yeah. just asked me. I could have done it like in a fraction of the time. Um, but, but we can, you can see it's, it just gives you a real quick snapshot. We can see, and then we're able to justify that. Imagine guys, if you are presenting this property to a lender and you can have these different type of documents where we can say, here's our subject property where, you know, we're justifying it by these three or five or however many uh, comps that we have there. But obviously I would have spent, I'm glad that the number was pretty comparable because I would have spent more time. You know, What's you interesting too, is your wholesale price on it. Go back and let's look at the wholesale price that you guys would have had on it let, let, for this one. Oh, um, so let me go back here. Oh, geez. Um, what was it again? Four, Sorry. 4451 East Earl. 4451 East Earl. All right. So let me see here. 
All right. So you can see here, these are our scores that we're putting so on it. It says on wholesale, I should be buying it for 891, correct? Correct. Okay. I bought it for 950. So it was a little conservative, which is great. I'd rather you be a little bit more conservative on what I should offer for wholesale than then I know my market and I know it well. And so I knew I could go up to 950. I had, I had reasons for that. Right. But, but the fact that you had, cause I originally came in at 900 with these guys. So you were only $9,000 off from my original look. You can see right there. Who's the owner of this thing. I can see who bought it. I can see exactly what you paid. I can see your loan. Um, yeah, we can see all that. This is your lender. Uh, we can see we can see all this information. And again, I told you it's invasive. So maybe <clears throat> if, obviously you can find out your neighbor's information. You can find everything in your town. Um, but again, you can see those different numbers. And, and a lot of times when you guys are in these systems, you're going to have questions. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be common. And our goal is to work together on this. Like it's almost like Jamil and I are saying, here's the car. We're showing you the buttons. We're not saying you have to drive. You can drive today if you want to, if you're comfortable. But it's just getting you comfortable so that that way you guys are marketing machines. You have all these, you have a lot of different questions. You have a lot of them will probably be answered in the frequently asked questions. So a lot of the different abbreviations I've given you, we also have a glossary that will define all the different terms. You guys have fantastic support. You're going to see that we're going to have email support, phone support. You're also going to have live chat right down here. So our team is ready to go with any questions. But some of the things I know that you guys are thinking is, okay, well, what do I do with this list? Like, what do I do with once I, once I have these people? And I'm just going to grab a couple of them just to walk you through. I'm not really going to change any of my filters just for right now. So you can select the whole list or you can do multiple pages of 25. When I do that, they're going to be added up here into the My Lead section. Now, we can download them out of the system if we would want to. Um, what we can do is we have two different skip tracing options. And this is just for right now. We're going to be in the, in, in the future actually just having one skip trace option. The difference between the two is this one. The first one is 10 cents. The skip trace plus is 15 cents. And with skip trace plus, you're able to pierce the corporate veil and we can get you LLC contact information. We can get you up to 10 different forms of contact, whether it be emails, phone numbers, house phone, cell phone. We can get you a ton of information, relative contact information. Um, our skip trace, our regular skip trace, this is just more for individuals. So unless you have gone in here and said only individuals on our list, then if you do only individuals, then you can do the skip trace. In the very near future, we're actually just going to be merging the two and giving you the higher quality data at a, at a price that's kind of a, a, in a middle range between those two numbers. So this is just temporarily that you have the two. Um, but if you have anybody on your list, like an, there's an LLC, I would recommend that you would have that you would do the skip trace plus. Also, you have a built in direct mail engine and you are bundled in to unbelievable pricing that you have here. You have two different options. You're going to see that we're going to have either a personally penned option, which is so cool. And this is this is something you may never work with and maybe something that you love. But we basically have a an affiliation with a company. It's a um, it's basically a warehouse with all these robotic arms that are physically holding a blue big pen. And that machine will physically handwrite your letter. It's a, it's about $1.89 a letter. So it's a little bit more expensive. It's about twice the price of our regular direct mail letters. But from what we hear, it's about 10 times the results because the envelope is, is handwritten. It has a physical stamp on it and it, it, it increases the open rate significantly. And I know we're not you know, going to be talking a ton here just based on our time of, about you know our direct mail. But if we wanted to come in here, let's say we want to do a five touch or a three touch or whatever our, our criteria is, you know, our information would typically pop up. And then from there, we can go and select our postcard. So it's very, very simple. It's just a couple clicks for us to be able to do our campaign. But Jimmy, I'm going to kind of turn it back to you so you can add uh, commentary and then um, we'll keep keep rolling with it. Yeah, no, uh, we've got a lot of people asking, you know, how much guys, I don't know who, what, who that Jamil person in the chat was. It wasn't me. I didn't put that in there. I, I, we have not gotten to that yet. The pricing of this is phenomenal guys, but I'm getting to that. We're telling a story here guys. And you guys are like, what's the end? Who, who did it? Who did it? We're not there yet. I'm not there yet. Okay. So can we just allow the, 
yeah, patience, Daniel Sun. Can we let the story build, guys? Because this is this is phenomenal. And we got people in here trying to do spoilers in the chat. Get lost. That's not how it works. Okay. Enjoy the movie. Okay. Anyhow, last act, Jenna. People are asking about buyers. Yes. What's happening with that? Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's one of my favorite things um, to talk about. So let me get back to sharing my screen here so that that way we can get rolling with it. So let me make sure. All right, one second here. Okay, let me share my screen. I feel like I need a personal assistant just for my Zoom sharing capabilities. I I, I look up to you that you have all that help there, Jamil. Someday I want to be lucky. Like I'm when lucky. I grow up. <laughs> so now, okay, so we have all these leads coming in. Our phone's ringing off the hook. We're calling everybody. Now, a lot of times people say, well, now what do I do with them? I have all these leads coming in. And, and that is very realistic. It is very realistic for you guys to get slammed with different calls. So what we can do is we can come in here and we can go into the Phoenix, Arizona area. And remember, what we need to do now is put ourselves into the mindset of what does a motivated buyer look like? What are some of the things that that they would that would show what somebody is a serious buyer, a serious cash buyer? So what we can do is we can come in here and say, all right, system. Give me all the people who have bought a property in cash. And what we can do is say, give me all the people that are recent. So we go to this last sale date and we can say, give me all the people in the last three months that have bought a house in my neck of the woods and have bought in cash. And if we want to be even more, like obviously we still have 900 and some people. So we can say, give me all the people that have bought a house in cash. And obviously you can buy a house in your personal name. I mean, I'm sure you, Jamil, you don't necessarily recommend that. I mean, it's better than obviously walking away from a deal. But in most yeah, but cases, let's just go business. Yeah. Yeah. So, OK, so as long as you said it, you're the boss. Um, in most cases, a serious person who is buying properties and they buy it in cash and they're buying it right now within the last month. I took that huge list and I'm at 111 people. So now I basically have a list of all the different businesses in my area that buy houses in cash and they bought at least as recent as the last month, 111 people. So now I could take this list. And I can you get me all their phone numbers? Oh, yes, I can. Get of I out can. of here, Jenna. Mm -hmm. so, and I and and the reason that I that I'm so big on this, because it's it a lot of people you're you're looking at this for to find the 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 yeah, buyers. People are but, paying eighteen. Or the no, people are paying twenty five thousand dollars a year on investor lift for this. Wow. We that's how much? How much are you saying? $25,000 a year. Oh. And they they can't even market directly to the buyers themselves. They have to go through Investor Lift in order to market to the buyers because they don't, Investor Lift doesn't want that information to get, re, you know, released to their customers because their customers won't pay the $25,000 a year next year. Well, let's see how much it would cost us. Oh, sixteen dollars and sixty-five cents. That's probably better than the twenty-five thousand. So that's what it would cost to get all of their contact information. And obviously, we can do that with our Skip Trace Plus because we can pierce that corporate veil. And now, so and then, not only that, you can direct mail them as well. You can reach out to them. And the reason I do this is because I was getting <laughs> slammed with leads recently, and I was saying to one of my friends, I and and he's like, well. Why don't you do this? Uh, look for the cash buyers and look in your area and do all this. And so I, I, I took his advice and I was doing this and I, and I sent out a very, very small campaign just because I'm in such a small area. I think I sent it out to like 15 different people and I got three calls back. The one, the one guy, he's like, I have over 65 rentals and I'm getting up there in age and I'm not really wanting to do this, but I'm always looking for a good deal. And if you ever need financing on one of them, let me know. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I got like all these rental as an opportunity. I got a potentially a, a private lender on the deal. And I had two other ones. I mean, it was phenomenal. I mean, and, and they're all people that are in your neck of the woods. So it's, it's not even like, I mean, when you contact people and Jamil, I'm sure you teach elevator pitches and these different speeches. And all you have to do is just say who you are, what you do and how you do it. And I mean, we live in such a, uh, an incentivized world. 
And if we can show our value to that person, then they're going to want to call back. Like, I wouldn't say, you know, you're calling this person like, hi, I need an hour of your time. Um, yeah, I'm a brand new investor and, uh, you know, and I'm looking to, you know, pick your ear all day long. No, it's like, <laughs> no. It, it's like, Hey, I'm Jenna. I'm an, I'm also an investor in the area. I'm doing a ton of marketing, a ton of advertising. I get so many unlisted unadvertised properties and obviously I can't buy them all. And I know your time's valuable. So if you have five minutes to give me a call back, I'd really like to, to touch base with you and see what you're looking for. So if I find something that meets your criteria, I can bring it to you first and foremost, like who wouldn't want to call that person back? I mean, you're doing all this work. I mean, and you're finding all these deals. And a lot of times when we're new and we're we're scared to be an investor, it's not so much that you have to do all these things in your area. Find somebody who is a very, very successful, serious buyer like Jamil and do your marketing in his area and bring him the deals. Because if you want to wholesale, wholesale to somebody who you know is going to buy them. It doesn't have to be in your town. So um, kind of back to you there, or I'll just keep ranting I'm, about I'm, that. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm really, I'm, this is really insane. Like I, I just have to say it, you know, and again, uh, why, why, you know, I laid this out for you guys today was because first and foremost, you know, I, it took me forever to get over the line, to get over the mountain on direct to seller, because I was just not okay with the amount of money. I was just not okay with that kind of investment. I'm not. I'm not okay because a lot of times if cost per contract is, is $3,000, let's call it $3,000, right? But you got to do this for about 90 days before you're going to get a deal. So that means if it's, you're going to do this for 90, de 90 days, you're probably going to spend $9,000 before you get your first contract. Not to say that you're not going to get two more contracts from that money, but it's going to take time and you're going to keep spending money before you start getting the ROI. And so that to me is where it's like, no, people are going to quit before they get a deal. They're going to quit before they get a deal. They're going to quit before they get a deal. They don't have the money. They don't have the money to do this because it's way too much upfront. So my thoughts were, okay, wait, this is so good that if it was me, if I was just getting started, if I'm brand new, okay, if I'm brand new at this, I would pay what it costs to get one contract for this system. I would pay that. I'd pay three grand. Hands down. I would guys in the chat, in the chat, tell me this. Okay. With now knowing what you know now, would you pay what it costs to get one contract to get access to this for the entire year? So three grand. Would you pay three grand to get access to this for the entire year? Let me know in the chat. Right. So there you go. So almost all of you guys would pay three thousand for it. Now add to that that it costs twenty five thousand dollars a year to get the buyer information that you're going to get from this. Would you at least say, yes, I like the three thousand dollars and I would and I would pay an additional thousand if I could get the buyer information. So would you pay four thousand dollars for that? Let me know. Well, it's not going to cost anything like that. That's the beautiful thing about it. So when I found out what the price was and what I found what you can get for this, because it's the entire year's access, the entire year's access. Yes, when you break it down, your average cost per contract will be around 200 bucks. But the entire year's access is under $1,000. That, that to me is insane. That to me is insane. It's insane. I can't believe that. It's like I, I my mind gets blown. I think to myself, okay, like this is this is if I'm investing in my business, this makes sense to me. This makes sense to me. Team, drop the link in the chat. Everybody's ready. Let's go. Here is the incentive. Okay, guys, I tomorrow we're gonna get back. We're gonna get back to this tomorrow. And we're gonna actually start calling these people. We're going to start calling these people. Okay, and we're gonna you're gonna see there's no monthly cost on top of it. It's it's 997. And then next year it goes to 97 a month. Easy. That's it. No monthly cost. It's 997. You're in. It's done. Tomorrow, for everybody who took action today, this is how this is what we're gonna do. One of you, I'm gonna reimburse 
the 997 to. Okay, one of you, I'm gonna re I'm gonna reimburse the 997 to. So I'm gonna choose one of the folks that took action today, and I'm gonna just say, hey, here's a 997. We're gonna do it live on tomorrow's live stream. I'm gonna sell you the 997 back, so you got your money back. Okay, uh, so it's free for you. On top of that, what Jenna's team has decided to do is they are going to add nationwide data. So instead of only 10 zip codes for the winner, so for the winner that I give the 997 back to tomorrow, you're going to get nationwide data. It's 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 going to be it's going to be insane. And you guys can also switch out the zip codes every month. So if you if you decide, "Hey, I want to touch a different zip code next month." I want to touch a different zip code the month after that, another one after that, another one after that, another one after that. They don't care. You can change them up. Can they change them within the month too if they want it? It's just every month you can. Every month, every month. And how easy is it to change them? You just let our support team know and they'll swap them out for you. Just get, nice. you can go to our live chat, call in, email. And maybe in time it's going to be easier than that, but that's what we have to do right now. No, there is no monthly. There is no monthly after that. It's nine ninety seven for the entire year. Then next year on month thirteen, on month thirteen it goes to ninety seven a month. Then you, you're not charged. You're not charged another nine ninety seven. It's just ninety seven a month after the first year. First year is nine ninety seven, and then ninety seven a month after the first year. Does that make sense? I've heard the same question like ten times in the chat. I just want to make sure everybody gets it. Everybody get this? Okay, nine ninety seven for the entire year. And then next year, it's $97 a month. Yes, this is a no-brainer. Yes, this is going to revolutionize your game. Yes, this, this is the only reason why I'm here talking to you guys about a direct-to-seller platform because it is 16 times more effective than what you've been doing. 16 times more effective than what you've been doing. That's the game. That's the game. Oh, and is there a limit on leads? I think you guys said 60,000. I can pull list the 60,000. Yeah, I yeah, you're able to do 60,000 downloads per month. You That's can download just, out the system. But you, why would you? You would you don't want to download that. Remember guys, the point of this is to decrease the number of lists of leads that you're pulling. I want you to I only want you to pull like 500. Like honestly, get those sellability and those wholesale scores up so high that your list is 500 people. That's it. Just 500 people. You talk to those 500 people. It's like, let's take, what's 500 times 16 times 16? Basically talking to 500 people is like talking to 8,000 people because it's 16 times more predictive. Insane. Insane. Jenna, this is, um, this has been, uh, Enlightening. Enlightening. I'm uh, I'm I'm absolutely uh, I'm I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled at what you guys have brought to the market. I'm thrilled at the results that my team is using. Someone asked, have we incorporated this into uh, Keegley? Absolutely, we have. My uh, John Hovland, my uh, vice president of sales, he was extremely interested. As soon as I told him, uh, we're using it at Keegley. We are we are doing direct to seller at small amounts in Keegley now. But it's just this. It's just very concentrated, very, very, very curated lists. That's it. Curation. Be the curator. Don't throw spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. Go find the sticky pieces of spaghetti, walk them over to the wall, and put them on there. That's how you do business. Make sense? Guys, the link is in the chat right now. Um, guys, can we just get the link in the chat without all the extra words around there and pin it somewhere? Just the link in the chat, the link in the chat, the link in the chat. It's getting it's it's being hidden by too much of the information. I just want the link in the chat. All right. To buy, here's the link. There you go. Yep. There you go. Right there. That's the link. Um and thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. Link, link, link. Yep. There you guys go. Um, don't delay. We are gonna be back here tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to actually be making calls. We're going to be calling these homeowners. We're going to be checking the data. We're going to be we're going to be putting the skip tracing to the test. Now, I want to ask about the skip tracing. No, it's not 997 and then 97 a month, guys. No. 
It's $9.97. That's it. One time. Next year, it'll go to $97 a month. Okay? Next year, it's $97 a month. For the first year, it's just $9.97. I hope I don't have to say that five more times. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for you today. I'm grateful for what we've been able to accomplish. Like this is, this is, uh, this is phenomenal. And guys, no, there is no monthly option. There's no monthly option in the first year. And, and, and we did that by design. Okay. And the reason that we did that by design is that you can't just, I'm, I, I don't want you to just dip your toe in here and say, I'm going to do this for a month. And then in a month, it, Oh, I, I made some calls and, and I, and, 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 and then I didn't work as hard as I should have. And, but then, you know, I, I don't know. So I don't want to do the work anymore. No, you, you've got to invest in yourself. Okay, you have to prove to yourself that you believe that you're going to show up tomorrow and do the work. Okay, you've got to prove to yourself by investing in yourself. You know, the moment when you don't have enough skin in the game, it's so easy for you to walk off. It's so easy for you to walk off. But when you put skin in the game, when you invested in yourself, it's it's not easy to walk away. That's when you're like, no, I got to... I, 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 I bought the meal. I got to eat it. I got to eat it. I got to do the work. So this is what this is about, guys. The link is in the chat. Dr. Deal Junkie, get it right now. Um, it is, this is the best thing I've ever seen. Okay, tomorrow we're going to be getting on the phones. We're going to be talking to homeowners. We're going to be testing the skip tracing. Tell us a little bit about the skip tracing, please. Um, and can people split up the 997 onto two cards if they need to? What, how does that work? Can they get a hold of somebody internally if they need to split up a payment in two cards? Is, is that possible or no? Are you asking me or your team? Yeah, yeah, you. Um, possibly. Uh, I mean, it would be however the, the payment works. I guess okay. on the site, does, if it gives you an option to do that. Uh, yeah, um, I, I, I don't know, guys, if possible. I, I If you can use one card, try that, please, because um, it's just. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, there's not, there's no option for that. I apologize guys. It's just not, not there, but um, yes. Uh, sign up tomorrow for everybody who took action today, for everybody who took action today, tomorrow, uh, one of you is going to win a full year's access. I'm going to sell you back the money. We're also going to give you national access. By the way, guys, if you wanted national access to the data, it's 10 grand. So, so the winner tomorrow is going to get a $11,000, win, I guess, right? 11, 11 grand. No, this doesn't replace Privy. Completely different things, completely different platforms. Um, does this do some of the things that Privy does? Yes. Uh, but this is for off-market. This is off-market, direct-to-seller, off-market, direct-to-seller. This is, is, so you're not having to download a list of 10,000 leads, skip trace 10,000 leads, talk to 10,000 people to spend $3,000 to maybe get one contract. Okay, this is about curating the data so that I can make my list super small, super, super small, super concentrated so that I only got to talk to a couple hundred people this month to get one deal. Okay. That's the game for all you guys that are working W2 jobs. You don't have a lot of time. You don't got the time to, to just throw spaghetti at the wall. You don't have the time to call an equity list. You don't, you don't have the time to call the full equity list. You don't have the time to call the full tired landlords list. You don't got it. But if you called only the list that was, okay, he, these are tired landlords, but they're not only tired, they're grouchy, their spouses cheat on them, they are bald, um, they are below the height of five foot six. Um, they, and so, yes, this you see, not only that, but now I can tell you how miserable this person is. Okay, that, this is what we're talking about. Okay, we can. We, this literally is predicting the 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 distress level, the pain level of these people. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I wasn't making short jokes. I'm a little guy too. I'm I'm just playing. Take everything I say with a grain of salt, please. I'm 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 crazy. Okay, um, but but this is what it means, right? We're we're just getting more concentrated. We're getting more curated, and then that means that just means that we don't have to work as hard. That's it. We don't got to do as many calls. End of the day. Jenna, um, I adore you. You're incredible. 
Uh, guys, can we all give some love to Jenna in the chat, please? Thanks for having me. I'm just so excited to get to hang out with you for this long. I'm excited to hang out with you too. You're you're absolutely uh, one of my favorite people. Every time that you and I get to be in uh, a room together, you're you just you magnetize me to you. you. Got that wonderful smile. Your energy is just incredibly infectious. You are so knowledgeable. My goodness, like listening to you talk today, I felt I got smarter. Uh, and 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 we're all smarter for having had the opportunity to spend this time with you. So. Again, uh, just a tremendous amount of gratitude, a tremendous amount of love for you, your team. Uh, Dr. Deal Junkie, guys, this platform is the truth. Make sure you sign up. Yes, there will be a replay. We'll be emailing out the replay. We will email you out the replay for tomorrow. So if you can't make it to tomorrow, don't worry. We'll get you a replay to that. Um, and if you have not yet signed up, go to the link in the chat. It's in there right now. Support team is posting it one more time. They're going to keep posting it until the end. What a day. What a day. Anything else you'd like us to know? I like how somebody says it's a yummy program. I mean, I couldn't agree more. Like, definitely. So, yeah. I, I mean, I I'm agree. looking forward to really putting it in action tomorrow and really showing what it can do. And I like to say it's like a gym membership, you know? If you sign up for it and you don't go to the gym, it's not the gym's fault, but if you really work with your, your Jamil trainer and you really do the things that you advise people to do, you're teaching people how to do so many different things. Because the thing is, if everybody's out doing the same exact thing, then we're all going to have whatever type of results. I mean, we're going to have similar type of results if, if any results, but if we're doing the things that nobody else is really doing, then we're going to find the deals that nobody else could find. And it's not so much that we're having to reinvent the wheel or do anything spectacular. It's do, just doing these small things consistently. And that's what's going to separate us from all the other investors or realtors or other people in real estate out there. So we literally have a way, it's like a crystal ball to like literally see all these different properties. And then it's up to us to reach out to them. And, and again, gets our phone ringing or gets their phone ringing and we can find them. It's just putting it all together, which is what you've done. So super excited to hang out. Is there like more? No, there's somebody wrote, <laughs> is there a feces for flooring tab? Pretty much Brandon. I, I mean, truly this is what is happening here. They, they, they are, they are some way somehow have gotten information. So, so curated in there that there's good chance that that if you have a high sell high wholesale sellability score in there, you're, you're gonna find poo on the floor. Um, guys, we're gonna turn off our cameras, we're gonna turn off our mics, but we're gonna keep the Zoom live for the next few minutes. For any of you that have not yet taken action and and clicked on the link to get the Doctor Deal Junkie platform, so that tomorrow we can all work on it together. I want you guys to have it paid for, bought, so that one of you guys can get the re the reimbursement, but then also you can follow along with us, right? Follow along with us as we're doing this so that the, you learn much quicker when you do it. You learn quicker when you do it, okay? Uh, Jenna, I love you. Um, would you do me a favor, turn your camera off and your mic off, and I'm going to do the same. And guys, we will see you tomorrow, same time, same place.